This dream might be the tastiest you've tuned into yet because what we're cooking up is tender, but important. We've got the top nine tips to discuss generational wealth at family gatherings. Picture this, you're at the family dinner and the mashed potatoes are making their rounds and Uncle Johnny is about to launch into his when I was your age. What if this time you flip the script? Instead of zoning out, you spice up the conversation with some thought-provoking questions that gets everyone talking. You even got your sister speechless and she's never been that quiet because now you're dishing out more than dinner. And we get it. Some people may not know what to say and some may feel it's kind of taboo. You are gonna be the one to change that and your family legacy. Is this conversation too personal to have out in the open or in front of guests? Nope, you won't be discussing personal information just topics that anyone, even guests, can join in on. You might be thinking, well, my family's not wealthy, so why would we have a conversation about wealth? This conversation may not be for every family, but don't count yours out. What if this was the conversation everyone was waiting to have? How will you know if you don't try? Legacy is more than a story. It's like finding out that hot apple pie gets even better when you put cold ice cream on it. Someone had to do it first, and then everyone was talking about it. What if I offend someone? You won't, because you're gonna follow these tips and you'll still come out cooler than cool by the end of the night. So cool. So this year, we're making a new rule. It's the season with a reason. Let's make use of the time together to make sure that your family is financially secure. So if you're new here, welcome. Whether you're the family's financial whiz kid or you still think that stock is just something in your soup, you're in the right place. We're about to learn how to pass the gravy, otherwise known as generational wealth, wealth transfer, or building the family bank. So, you ready to dig in? That was dope. That's exciting, right? Welcome. Happy Thanksgiving Eve. Uh, I don't know, maybe replay viewers might not be, it might not still be that, but it's the holiday season, right? And we're going to have a lot of family gatherings. And this is why a, a topic like this is so important because discussing generational wealth isn't just about numbers and figures. It's about fostering a culture of financial awareness and security that can benefit your family for generations to come. All right. We read some studies. And they show that having the ability to talk about money openly with your family leads to financial confidence. Plus, it's a great opportunity to bond over shared goals and dreams. So you can't go wrong with that. Uh, if you've been waiting to preheat the, uh, preheat the oven with the conversation about with uh, your family about building a family bank, but you're not sure how to do it, you're in the right place. We've got some hot tips and hot takes on how to get the conversation started and what to avoid. So... Let's get started. Let's All do right. It. Let's do it. So uh, number nine, we have keep it casual, and I think we're gonna we're gonna go down to to the to the first one. I think why this is so important is just to have your expectations in a safe space, right? Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither is a family bank. So there's really no need to have a conversation that uses a lot of of uh, jargon or introduce like complex topics or concepts. So that's my first tip. You have anything you want to add to that? Well, you know, I'm a fan of meeting people where they are. So first off, you know, if you are in an environment where traditionally we don't even talk about, we, we don't talk about topics like this, right? right? We don't talk about personal development. We don't necessarily hear when we get around family, um, you know, what's going on financially within the confines of, of, of this, this, this structured family. Like these are not normal conversations that we're having. So we really have to meet people where they are. So I think creating that safe environment, you know, you know, kicking it off with a joke like you know <laughs> you know creating a safe environment so that we can kind of open up this discussion i think is key so you're absolutely right yeah and we want to hear from you guys do you think it's completely taboo like there's certain rules that certain families have where it's um you know no politics no religion no enter fill in the blank like is this completely taboo or is this something that needs to be normalized so that we can make better use of the time? Because we're going to spend it anyway, right? We're going to be around our family and we're going to make time to spend together. And so if sometimes we are struggling with what to talk about or feel like we're just kind of hanging out, then maybe it's 
more productive to have some of these conversations that help us reach our goals through the whole year, right? And no, you know, maybe there, this is an opportunity to strengthen your support system, being right. able to talk about these things because there's a lot of guilt and shame around talking about money. And that really is probably the biggest catalyst to why these conversations don't happen inside of families. Yeah. And, you know, I, um, you and I have talked about this a lot, but I've never really expressed this part on a live. So it feels a little bit strange, but I have a challenge. I, mean, I have an issue when it comes to me and groups of men, because nine times out of 10, when you're in a group, you know, let, what I picture is this Thanksgiving dinner and, you know, the, the gentlemen all downstairs watching whatever the football game is. And when you get a group of men together, the f conversations are so basic and and surface. You know, we're talking about some dude's pass or some dude's catch and we never talk, but there's so much wisdom in that room. Rarely do men get together and share that wisdom. Rarely do men get together and impart that wisdom on younger people. We tend to allow these young folks to bump their heads. And as they bump their heads, then we interject and go, you know what? Had, had you had you come talk to me, then I could have versus here's some of this information out front, outright, so you don't run into these challenges. So I think this is just one of those, you know, gosh, keeping it, I guess, casual is key. But I have some some disdain around around, I guess, groupings like this. And I don't know what it looks like when a group of women get together because I've never been involved. But uh, I do know what it looks like when when the boys get around and uncle whoever comes in and, and you know, we're, we're shooting pool or whatever, playing cards or not, whatever that is. Um, you know, very rarely do we dig into, you know, something a little bit more meaty like this. Yeah. Gosh, we could really go on about Man. that particular topic <laughs> Man. because the, the, the need to be right, I think is kind of at the core of that. There's the, um, right of passage you were talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the need to be right. And I think a lot of times what ends up capping conversations are those particular things like, right. oh, maybe you don't qualify for this conversation, right? right. And um, that's our eighth tip is keep everyone in mind, elders, teens, everyone in between the just keeping in mind that financial literacy does not have an age requirement or a limit. So to your point about who we're talking about, if it's uh, uh, for instance, like parenting advice, right? So a lot of people would say people who don't have kids should not be a part of parenting conversations, right? However, they could also be amazing observers. Just because they don't have kids or they haven't had that experience, there's a lot of people who are in uh, child childcare um, industry that don't have kids, but they have a lot of experience with kids. Teachers, for instance, right? They spend more time with, with kids than parents do so, <laughs> sometimes, right? By the time you put them to bed and the time they're waking up and on the weekends, Sometimes teachers are spending more time with them. So I think it's it's not fair to exclude anyone, right. but also what think just think of some conversations that you have thought I could I could contribute value. I feel like I could. I have something to say, but I feel very silenced by what I think are qualifiers for this conversation. So someone needs to be the person. So let's say you're this isn't your home or this isn't your event, but you know that your intention is to keep it open and keep everyone included. Therefore, you're going to speak up, maybe ask a question to bring somebody in or encourage somewhat, someone who may be feeling kind of left out of the conversation. I think what we'll find as we move through this list is that word question is going to come up a lot because I think it's the quality of the questions that you ask. And I think if we can learn to ask better questions, we can actually get to better solutions. And so to your point around including uh, those who may be visiting or those younger individuals who aren't necessarily normally a part of these discussions or the younger individual who's been watching this live and f feel like they have the confidence to be able to interject into this conversation, it is absolutely about asking better questions because how dope would it be for that younger individual who hasn't even started their quest on what retirement looks like to ask uncle whoever that is sitting in that chair rocking back and forth going, did you think retirement was going to look like this? Like, 
you know, just being able to ask those better thought provoking questions to kind of peel back some of the layers, I think is key. So. Yeah, because not everyone's active, but also right. you don't know what people are doing, right? right? Especially if these conversations feel taboo and you just have not had them before. So it's probably not something that somebody is just going to walk around freely sharing if they don't feel like that information is out there. Okay, so uh, tip number seven is be open to varying opinions on the topic. And this part, I think, is pretty key. Yeah. Because everyone's relationship with money is different. Their history with money is different. I remember when you and I were in the um, Money in Your Mind class with Cortland, and he asked the question, what is your first memory with money, right. right? Wasn't that the question? I think of something like that, yeah. Yeah, what is your first memory of money? And you had a really memory. Yeah. Earliest memory, yeah. And you had to really think back to what it was. Then you had to take yourself on a journey of the history of money and how money has felt to you or how, like, what are those experiences that are tied to money in your childhood all the way up till right now, right? Right significant like milestone kind of what's the i'm thinking of um canon event that's think about spider-man <laughs> the canon events that are tied to them and this was such a good exercise because it really made me think of the even the music that right. we listen to and how some of the music has influenced so even some of these types of nuggets could be a great ways to bring tons of different varying opinions about this topic into um, a conversation that could be extremely productive and encouraging to other people as well. So be open. Not everybody has the same journey. Not everybody feels the same way. And be understanding that there's a lot of guilt and shame around this. And so not talking about personal finances, like how much money do you have in your account? That's not the conversation that we're encouraging you to have. It's more about how do you feel about this topic? How do you feel about the family bank? And so that's where um, being open is really important and making sure that you're, the, the discussion stays open as well. And I, th I think that's the best way that you can, um, I guess that's the best role that you can play in creating that safe space. Because if, you know, you and I are having this discussion and you feel very strongly about how the IRA has saved your life. And, yeah, I may feel differently, but, you know, from my perspective, I'm coming into it as though there really are no wrong answers. I'm just trying to learn. I'm just trying to understand. And so the best thing that I can do is be open to receive whatever it is you're about to share, regardless of whether I use it or not. It's just being open with, to the fact that I don't think there's any wrong answers here because what we're trying to do is create a space or an environment where we can do this more often and actually peel, peel more layers back to get to actual solutions. That's it. Uh, Dalai Lama says his first memory his grandpa buying a farm, showing up to title with $75,000 in cash. Jeez. What is that, like 14 raspberries? <laughs> <laughs> $75,000 for a whole farm. And that's, that's crazy, though, because, Dolly, I'm sure back in those days, that felt like an insane amount of money, right? And then cash on top of that, like you got to see all of that cash. That's that that is one thing that we did for for our kids is we had bought all of this fake money off of Amazon, like ten thousand dollar stacks, like in the bundle with the band on it. And we had these stacks and we set all of this cash like money on money, stacks on stacks in front of our kids. And what we were explaining to them was um. This is where what we could be doing. So we were running through some scenarios about them moving out on their own, right? Because they're adults. Or if we did things a different way and we allowed them to, um, we were in, like investing in them to be able to invest in themselves, essentially, right? So we're starting the family bank and we're showing them what the impact would be. And just for them to be like having like $60,000 sitting in front of them, they saw that completely different than just having a conversation with numbers on paper, right? 
that became a very real, much more real to them, even though they knew that it was fake money, right? Obviously, right. but just being able to visually associate and then also have a feeling attached to it, which I think feelings, if you've not read the book, Feelings Are the Secret, I mean, it's everywhere. Feelings are the secret. Donnell, you shared something with me uh, today, and inside of that was literally saying feelings were the secret. I, I just can, I can't unsee it now. Right. And having, being able to talk about something is one thing, but knowing how you're feeling about it, even if you're saying one thing and you are doing another, which is our um, tip number six is no judgment because oftentimes people know better than they do, right? So I think sometimes it's hard when you know that somebody is not about that life, but they can talk like they're about that life. And it becomes really frustrating when you're just like, ah, shut up, right? However, however, we do this, we all have somewhere in our lives where we're doing that. We know, we know better, but we do different, right? Right. And so listening to what people feel confident about contributing, I think is, is, is one thing like, why would they feel confident? Why would they know that, but then not do that? That part's mm -hmm. not important. We're not placing judgment here. However, isn't it even more important to pay attention to what they do know and what they feel confident talking about? And then there's a other part of this where, like I was saying before, where there's some people who probably have a lot to contribute, but they need to have that encouragement because they may feel like they don't qualify to be a part of this conversation. And I think having somebody who is like, has it in their mind to not let, not allow people to get lost or drop out of the conversation. So asking them a question, how do you feel about that, this topic? Keep it general, of course, keep it casual, but how do you feel? Just to be able to encourage them and pull them in because this, we don't normalize these conversations again. So encouraging them like, yeah, no, this is okay that we're having this conversation and we want to hear what you have to say. I think that's important. Yeah, and I don't think there's a whole lot lot to add that, there because I think you're it's it's that creating that that safe space, and this is mm -hmm. this is critical to creating that safe space. Meaning, uh, maybe I don't have all of the knowledge that the rest of the people in the room have, and so I'm already feeling uncomfortable or insecure as it relates to that. So, um, you know, me sharing my position, sharing my perspective, and now not not getting uh, I'll call it decimated or. Um, um, you know, beat up just because I don't have all of the uh, foundation that everyone else has around this subject, you know, so I think that is absolutely key. Yeah, and seeing people as family, not as money, right? Right. These are your family members. These are people that matter or are meaningful or close to you. And so being able to see that if they win, if everybody rises together, it's a bigger win overall and so it matters more that people get um again because it's not it's science right that if you can have these conversations openly it's proven it leads to financial confidence and you need to have financial confidence or increase your financial confidence in order to start educating yourself make better decisions and get in a better place right hmm. i want to share this real quick uh from nathan he says I remember being young and burying some money and uh, that I had in the ground trying to grow a money tree. <laughs> you, well, I think this is a great question to ask. Like, what is your earliest memory of money? Like, let's talk about it. And I think some of those shares probably uh, might, might surprise you. I think um, what, um, cause I remember having this conversation with several different people. And one of them was with, uh, you know, one of our mentors, uh, Jeff Fagan around, you know, that, that early memory of Robin Hood, right? You rob from the rich and you give to the poor. What was the, what was the psychological damage that was being done to you as a result of something like that? Right. You're, you're viewing, you know what, having money is bad or, or rich people are bad or, you know what, it's okay to rob from the rich because they have abundance anyway, you know, versus maybe looking at that from a different perspective and how it could have 
can kind of that uh, that narrative have been shifted if we kind of look at this as how do we achieve abundance and how do we uh, share the wealth and you know stuff like that you know so, so I think I think to your point that earliest memory these are the things that kind of shaped us and you know whether it was listening to mom and dad argue about bills or how bills were going to be paid or how much something costs or what that um, that um, dollar amount spent at the grocery store was when we we're supposed to be on a budget of why, you know, it's, it's all of those things kind of, kind of, kind of make that difference. Man, even to ask your grandparents, if you have surviving grandparents to share stories of what it was like, what, you know, what was their relationship? What was their, fi like, what was their grocery budget over time? And, What's their earliest memory of money? I think that sometimes the we think of the of the word legacy, and sometimes for some families because they've counted themselves out of wealth being a part of the meaning of legacy, right? It's about the story. It's about who this person was to this family or to the world and the imprint that they left on the world, right? Which is which is fantastic. However, I think the stories get lost along the way. Right. The all of that this person imprinted on the word on the world gets reduced down to a couple footnotes. For instance, he was a farmer, right? He bought a farm for $75,000. Um, what do you know about your great-grandfather? Your great-great-grandfather, right? What do you know about them? Most of us probably don't even know their names. They just know that they existed. Thank you for that, because you wouldn't be here if it, if it weren't for them. Yeah. However, it doesn't mean that you know very much about them, right? But I can, I, I'm pretty sure that most families that are passing down wealth from generation to generation, they know where it came from. And it's hard to forget, right? So I, I think the concept of family, a concept of family bank um, is maybe not a conversation every family is open to having, but financial security promise is something everyone is open to, not, shouldn't just be open to having, it should be non-negotiable because right. I think it's available for everyone. And financial education is how you're going to get there. So number five is asking questions. And I think having some hand, some questions handy so that you can keep the conversation going or you can steer the conversation if it's in, in a healthier direction if it starts to veer off course. I think this is important. And Donnell, you had some awesome questions. And I really, I loved your questions. So I want well, you to read them for us. While, while you, you've been going through these, like questions keep popping into my head. Like, um, and, and they're questions where, I picture them, you know, everyone sitting around the table and that conversation happening. And it's, it's, you know, what does legacy s sound and feel like, you know, to each individual? Oh, it looks like I'm frozen. Uh, what does legacy sound and feel like to each individual in the room? And what are those things that can be different? Am I frozen to you? Yeah, you're frozen to me. Okay. Well, guess what? I'll be back. <laughs> All right. Well, while he's doing that, um, well, I have some questions. Uh, one of them was just the the uh, memories of of money. Here's something else that I think is um, important. Well, maybe we can go on to a different one. That way, I won't kind of run um, way yet. So I'll move on to number four, and we'll come back to number five. Okay. So number four is are we still live? I think we're still live. I think Donnell just had to go out. Okay. Number four is while it's common to share something that you're grateful for, you can also sh share something that you'd uh, want to be grateful for. So we have this uh, tradition where we go around the table and we talk, everybody has to say something that they're grateful for. I think a lot of families have this, this type of tradition, right? But instead you could also say, or in addition to something that you'd want to be grateful for. And this is something that Donnell it wasn't exactly this, but he started uh, last year was talking about uh, goals. But I think 
that framing it in this way of something that you'd want to be grateful for is another way of kind of like uh, engaging or starting that conversation. So you can start by sharing your own thoughts or your own research, things that you've been looking up and a goal that you'd hope to achieve by next year. Again, we did this in our family last year. Everybody wrote it down on a piece of paper. So it was kind of like an, an activity for everyone to join in on. But what was amazing to hear is like where people are and what their where their focus is. I think we assume things about each other often, but we also don't know how to celebrate and support people if we don't ask what what are they focusing on? Like, how can I cheer for you? How can I support you? When you get to hear what is truly important to them, then it's easier to then be able to see them in a different way and be able to celebrate and support them throughout the year because family gatherings shouldn't be the only time that we are connecting with each other, right? Right. And, you know, that that exercise that you referenced, you know, I've been kind of sh struggling with trying to understand how, you know, my ability to manifest things to be true and what are those steps and actions you take to really kind of move towards and with intention, you know, accomplishing those goals. And so as we were going around the room talking about what we were thankful for, for that, for that prior, for that year, which was, which was almost ending, it was, it kind of dawned on me. Well, what is it that I'm actually thankful for coming up? Like, what do I what do I expect to be happening in this following year? And I am, you know, already thankful for the just the opportunity to be heading in that direction. So it's, it was almost like, let's look forward. Uh, let's look, look, look to the to our purpose and what's going to happen next. And what are those steps that we need to get there? And that maybe that first step is just speaking it into existence that, you know what, this time next year, you know, I, I expect to be thankful for, you know, these things, these things happening within my life or these um, these milestones that I'm expecting to be able to, um, to to be able to hit going forward. So that was kind of the goal. And it just kind of turned into something pretty beautiful, you know. It really did. But again, because we we then knew where everybody was headed, right, where their boat, like right. the direction that their boat was going. We also knew how to support them or right. we knew the questions we could now then start to prompt or ask to be able to uh, discover or explore ways of supporting them. So right. you see them doing something and you normally you might say like, why are you doing that? Right. Then they would have to explain it to you. And if there's an open platform where they can say, hey, this is what I'm doing, like this is where I'm going. And they know that you're looking for ways to support them, then um then you'll be able to identify that, oh, they're doing that thing because this is where they're going. Sometimes they don't, people don't share, especially younger adults. They don't like to share what their goals and dreams are, or they share the only the ones that they feel like are acceptable right. to other people. And that's kind of sad because if they're doing that, then they're probably doing other things in on the side or in the background for what they really want, right? And there's this like discourse of what they think is acceptable and what they really want to do and helping them maybe even guide to find the win-win of maybe they could have both at the same time. It's not this or that, right? Yeah. Uh, so that they feel supported and they're not just out there on their, their own like what you were talking about before in the rite of passage where you just allow people to bump their head, oh, they're gonna figure it out and now they've wasted 10 years figuring it out and they could have been somewhere else had they had the help. Right. And so we were talking about the questions to ask, you know, that kind of, you know, going around the room and asking, what does legacy even mean? And, you know, because to some that may that may that may mean some some dollar figure, you know, being able to transition or pass on some dollar figure. Some it might mean, you know what, this home that we're in and the fact that we're around this table, this is my legacy. Right. That right. The the the, the grandkids and the great grandkids and this family that that we have in front of us. But I think just getting gaining some clarity around what does legacy even mean? And ultimately that running into um when you start talking about what I'll call it, what um, a generational wealth might mean, what it might look like, it's the why not us? You know, maybe it didn't start today. Maybe it's not happening right now, but why not? Why not now? Why not us? If not now, then when? You know, who? because the truth is we're all, what, one generation away 
from from generational wealth. So why wouldn't it start with us? And so what are some of those actions? You know, how um, how are you currently being leveraged today? What does leverage look like in your life? Rather than putting some type of, I'll call it, um, uh, position or stigma on what leverage is and what it isn't, asking the question, how, how do you perceive leverage? How, is lever how are you using leverage today? What would happen, uh, Grandpa, if you had some additional leverage or support that aided you into, into retirement? How much different would your retirement be? Um, you know, how, uh, what would you do different today, knowing everything that you know, and the fact that you've been retired for X number of years, what were some, what are some of those things that you wish you would have done differently when you were my age? You know, it, it, there's so many questions here, but I think the key is coming from the perspective of, I'm just trying to understand, and I'm just trying to learn, and I'm not trying to pass judgment. Uh, I'm not trying to make you feel as though you're less than or didn't accomplish. It's really more of uh, what are your thoughts on these topics? Um, you know, because because you're going to run into, you know, there's there's these these um, differing degrees of people that are going to be attending this this dinner. Right. You've got the individual who may have graduated college and feel like they've made it and they're well on the way of being able to accomplish that that retirement goal. And they've got their financial advisor. And so when you ask them questions around what does retirement look like and how would you go about it? And they're they're stepping you through all of these uh, actions that they've taken with their financial advisor at, at Fidelity and the things that they're investing in. And they're proud of it. But do they really understand the impact and the the power that they actually don't have in this process and the amount of fees that that they're that this product is being eaten up in? So how do you navigate this discussion and not poo-poo on that celebration, but really more just kind of understand this is where they are and ask some of those questions like, in this process, how much control do you have? Or right. or if you had more control, how could this process be different? Or you know what, when we had this last downturn after after uh, COVID, what was the impact? And man, you know, what were some of those things you wish you could have done differently to be able to guard against those things? You know, so and again, for the individual, the, for the cousins in the back who are quiet and really aren't participating in the conversation at all, it's really pulling them in because here's the thing about these young people. If they haven't shown me anything else, they have shown me that, one, they realize that these companies don't care about them and they are less, I'll call it, uh, conditioned to be at the same job forever doing the same thing. They are expecting a return on their investment. And so helping them understand that, you know what, if you what you're looking for is leverage and what you're saying is I'm not going to allow these companies to leverage me. But what if you learn how to leverage these companies a little bit better? What if you put yourself in a position such that you can actually um, use these companies that you work for to put you in a position to where you can fire them? Like you in introduced the concept of have you ever thought about what retirement er retiring early would look like? What, what If you had the option of being able to retire early, what would that age be? And what would you do? Exactly. And yeah. If your age is X and you're now and you're currently Y, what's that gap? And what are you doing today or what could you be doing differently today to help close that gap? And let them say things like, there's no way I could retire early. Those those products don't even exist, you know, and, and then that allows you the, the space and the room to maybe introduce some different vehicles that, you know what, have you thought about this? What if this existed? Would that be something that uh that would benefit you? I mean, I, I can go on and on, but there's just so much here as it relates to asking better questions. And it's asking those questions to invite a dialogue. It's asking those questions to to cause people to pause and think. And you know what? I hadn't even thought about it that way. You know. I love everyone who's stopping in and just hey, wishing us. Hey, here for a minute. Yeah. There, we, we get it because even if you have a – you know, in the background, like a radio, we just appreciate you guys uh, popping in. I think, gosh, get, well, one, I would say to keep it casual, asking some of those more detailed questions might feel challenging to people, Sp specifically somebody who like about their personal situation, oh, I right? I agree. But if you keep it on the topic of, right, so what would, re like, what would retirement look like? Right. Have you thought about, right. do you even consider yourself having the ability to retire? Whether you can or you can't, that's not the, there's no judgment here that we're not talking about your personal finances. 
What we're talking about is what does that look like? Because for a lot of people, when they think of retirement, they think of like golfing, right? They think of like, oh, I'd be bored anyway, because what am I going to do all day? I don't uh, sew things. That would be me. I would just be sewing. But it's for some people, it's like leisure, right? That's what retirement looks like. And um, that's not that, that, that's a very common, but it's also a misconception. So I think asking generalized questions like that is really important and helpful. But playing games could also be a way to strike this up. Monopoly is a great game, right? There are a lot of games that you could play. Um, even Uno. We used the reverse card when we were showing reverse uh, reverse velocity banking strategy. But it doesn't matter what the game is because it's about decisions that you're making to win, right? right? It's about strategizing that when you have decided that you're going to win, when you when it's become non-negotiable for you, you are willing to to make moves and plays and to better ensure your chances of winning, right? And sometimes it means at all costs. So Uno, I think, is a good one because I think Uno can get end up getting people on the same team, even though Uno is not a team game. I think teams end up forming in every family where it's like, okay, I'm going to throw this down. And then the other person's like, okay, and I'm going to throw this down. And they're like going after the same person, right? We In our family, that happens all the time. All the time. All the time. And we're like, that's not You see, not Angelique only has two cards left. We need to make sure, whatever you do, we need to make sure either she does not play or she needs to pick up more cards. It's a game. Somebody has to win. We get it. But having the conversation of around what if, what how, how we play the game of life, right, doesn't mean that somebody... Uh, one person has to win and everyone else loses. And I think even just that principle is important. Are you frozen again? Shh. Guys, honestly, I was going to make slides and I was going to put like all the tips up, right? Nine, eight, and have it be fancy. But I thought to myself, just once, just once, let me remove all of the things that could go wrong with tech things, right? Let's just keep it simple no tech issues. Here we go. That's all right. We're, it's it's not gonna, it yeah, we don't we don't have to be here very long to go through these. And we, we I mean, we got we got cooking to do, too. But so we won't. It's my camera going, hey, it's Thanksgiving. I'm supposed to have a day off at some point. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so number three, number three, we're almost we're almost to number one. Number three is read the room. So don't force it. Right. right. It's OK if you bring it up and you don't get the response that you hope for. Um, just you could try again later or you could resort to tip number five and ask questions. So ask, hey, this is something that I do want to talk to you guys about. When would be a good time to have this kind of conversation? Who is interested in having these conversations? Because it's important that we have these conversations. So that's do you have anything you want to add to? Well, and I think you're, you're spot on because maybe doing the Lions game isn't the right time. So it's, it's, it's maybe after it's over or during halftime or whatever the case may be. But so you're right. It's, it's picking those moments. And it also doesn't have to be a group activity. You know, there, there are those uh, specific individuals within your family, like you might actually want to better understand how they got to where they are or how they've handled some challenges that maybe you're dealing with as well. Or, you know, so it's, it's maybe the one offs. You know, it's 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 when they when they head to the garage to go refill that that glass that they have in their hand. It, it, you know, maybe it's those moments. So I think there's many different, uh, I guess, moments throughout the night or throughout the day where you can pick your uh, pick your spots to be able to have these conversations. Because you, to your point, when the games start, uh, that's a perfect time to be able to just again these open ended questions to allow, uh, you know, thought provoking responses in the midst of making sure you don't, you know, I don't let you go out, um, go out in Uno first. So, you know, it, it's, it's it, you're absolutely right. It's um, kind of reading the room and making sure you're, you're, you're being more conscious of, Hey, is this the right time or not to be able to kind of bring this subject up? So. Yeah. Uh, Rose, this is, this is a good number. I think you'll like tip number two. Rose says trying to convince the younger generation to get permanent insurance so that they may have a vehicle to levy in the future. It's hard 
to hard so song sharing a lot of your videos. Timing is important. It is. And go ahead. Well, I was just going to, you know, so because I get this a lot. Right. And here's the thing. Show me the Jake from State Farm commercial where he says, hey, come over here and let me show you how to make more money with life insurance. Like who buys life insurance to be able to build or generate wealth? It just does not exist. So I, I would expect this to be uh, quite a challenge. But the key is, um, you know, again, starting down the path of, OK, maybe they haven't heard of a vehicle like this to be able to achieve that goal. So it starts with, hey, what vehicle do you have today? And where are you headed based off that vehicle? Like what 25 year old is excited about being able to touch their, not being able to, to touch their retirement dollars till age 65. Like you can't find one. You can't find one 28 year old that is excited about contribute, contributing to a Roth IRA and not being able to touch that money until they're almost 70. And so regardless of whether or not they've heard about it, it's helping them understand that there are vehicles out there that can help you achieve your goals sooner, sooner than you ever anticipated. How would you feel if that was even possible? Like, whoa, like I haven't thought about it that way. Right. Like, like, tell me more. And it's not starting out with, hey, it's a life insurance based vehicle because that, you know, they're going to call cap. Right. So is that how you use that cap? Yeah. Yeah. Call cap. Okay. Yeah. Again, I, Good job. Anyway, but um, but the bottom line is, it's 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 really understanding where people are, meeting them where they are, and kind of peeling back layers based off where they are to help get to a. There are some better things out there. There are some better ways out there. You know, because I've been trying to figure out how to introduce the four percent rule. Like everyone should know and understand the four percent rule and how it impacts them. Everyone should understand uh, the rule of seventy two and how it how it impacts them. But very few people do. Very few people have any idea as to how the rule of 72 could really determine or help you understand why you want one one invest in one vehicle compared to another, you know. So, so no, I'm with you. Uh, Veronica was saying, but I had her, had her comment up, that she's a baby in the family, so she's not weathered enough to be listened to. Mm -hmm. And that's the part right there is just because don't exclude anybody from these conversations. Some of my favorite conversations, some of my... My my growth, what, what am I trying to say here? Some of the conversations that have promoted growth and awareness and perspective for me have been with our kids. Right. And if I would not be open to hearing their perspective and what they have to share, I would have been robbing myself of those opportunities. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful that they feel open enough to share. I am so grateful that they have the concepts that they have today at their age because I'm literally just like, as soon as I get it, I'm like, here, let's look, let's keep learning this together, but I'm not going to wait until I have it. I'm not going to wait and, and rob you of the time to be able to use it, right? We're going to learn this together. And I appreciate that. So she says that money, she also says money is a topic all the time at gatherings because they're a family of small business Love owners. That. Love that. And he, and here's the part you were just talking about, like how to become properly structured. And a lot of small business owners don't even aren't even aware of what a self directed 401k or IRA is and how it could help them. They also probably are um, dealing with some of the same things that most small business owners are dealing with, which is like access to healthcare, affordable healthcare, uh, being able to qualify for group rates or what that could look right. like if you were to go up under an umbrella so that you could help each other qualify for those things, like how to structure yourself, I think, and what those tools that are, what tools are available to you is also super important. Okay. You know, I wanted to go, oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You got to be kidding me. Bruh. <laughs> oh my gosh. And my nose is itchy. What is going on with your camera? It's Thanksgiving. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm moving on to tip number two. Rose, this is about your comment because what you were saying about time and trying to explain to people and having trying to have these conversations, which seems like in the chat is uh, pretty common. Would you, let me let me see here, tech gremlins. <laughs> what is what is the deal? I think we have some sort of like 
energy in tech is just like, no, don't do it. Try, out here trying to be great. Yeah, just just allow me trying, to be great. right. Okay. <laughs> All right. So tip, the, the second tip, we're almost to number one, mm-hmm. um, is about when you're having these conversations or when these conversations are normalized. And if it needs to be brought up, this is why it's important. 62.5% of uh, people felt it was important to talk about estate planning and their final wishes to their family members prior to their 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 their, their final exit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yet only 21.4% had done so. So funerals are the only place that most families have these conversations. And that's, that's unfortunate because you're dealing with so much already during a, a moment like that. We just had the, those ex- experiences. Right. And watching some of those conversations start to form around those events, it's already enough to have to grieve. It's already enough. If it's because that person that you're grieving did not have those conversations with you, that's uh, one part of the equation. If the other part of the equation was it just wasn't normalized to have those conversations and so therefore it was uncomfortable for everybody to have those conversations, imagine how uncomfortable it is to have that conversation without that person present, right? It's gonna have to happen regardless. So that's why, and I should, probably should have led with that, but I thought it was a really important, so I had to put it towards the top of the list, number one, right? This is number two, is this conversation has to happen regardless. So if they're not gonna start when you are um, enjoying time together and start normalizing them so that it's not as emotional, there's no panic, there's no grief attached to these conversations, then they can become more productive and more can be done, right? And things can be changed or arranged. And so that this is where opportunity exists. So I think that number two is a great reason to kickstart these conversations by being the one to normalize these conversations in your family. But let's peel that back a little bit because why is it this way? Nine times out of 10, it's because there's there was an expense associated with whoever that was and, and, and the fact that they're no longer here. And that discussion around finances during that period was because there was a cost here that was incurred and we need to try to figure out how to manage this cost because there was no, no, no structure in place or no foundation in place or whatever the case may be as to why. And so I know that's a large part of it and I know. Bruh. We've net this. I don't even know what to say because we're almost to the end of the tips. Come on. Okay. Well, what are you guys talking about in here? All right. Veronica says, we've actually been doing that with my mother for the past couple of years, getting everything together. Um, so her wishes are in solid stone and there's no way that they're fighting. Very important. Very important to my mother and myself because of what I watched and what happened to my... Yeah, when my grandmother, yeah, golly, and that's the thing. It would, it would just be so much better to be able to do something different before that event happens, right? And that's again, that's where the opportunity is. If Donnell freezes one more time, I get a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. This is Oprah, the Oprah's favorite thing moment. Like, everybody get You get a boat. You get, you get a, a boat. boat. Oh, you know what? We, gravy boat. We got to, let me, let me go and bring that up while we're talking about the next one. So we moved on. Oh, my gosh. We'll move on to the last goal. The last point. Dang it, I almost yeah, ruined it. Oh, my gosh. Kelly, you got a boat. She got a boat. She called it. We're honoring it. There it is. If you're new and you don't know what the boats are about, um, we're going to show you here in just a second. Um, Are you back? Um, Stidham? Party of one? Stidham? No. Well, that's all right. We will, the show will go on. Okay, let's see. 
Wouldn't be alive without technical difficulties. No truer words have been said. This is getting annoying though, to be honest. Okay, so what are your what are your top tips? If you guys have some suggestions, put them in the chat, please. Please do. Bro, it wouldn't be alive, nor would it would it be a, a even even in my, in my consults. These yeah. fun things happen. So. Well, we gotta fix it. It's a jam. Okay, so the top tip, table talk tips. Let's get there. Top number one is. Can you guys guess? Knowing what the goal is. You gotta know what the goal is and you gotta know where you're going in order for, in order uh, to stay on course. And so I think having a, a North Star of what are you doing? What's right. the purpose of having these conversations? I think having a, a um, again, an, a, like a North Star, having this to be part of how you're building your compass to know uh, how to steer and where and where you're going. So, yep, Veronica, you know, they, and they all got golly, it. What's the goal? And, and and the thing is, it's that it's the really the boat conversation. It's are we all rowing in the same direction? And the best way to learn whether or not you are is to is to kind of go around the room and let's just highlight what is the goal? What is because uh, you can't build a fa family bank if we all aren't headed in the same direction and we all aren't aligned as far as what that family bank would look like and how to accomplish it. And, and again, maybe we don't have all the answers, but at least we know our goal is to put ourselves in a position such that I never have to leverage or have to worry about getting financing from a bank again. And I can, uh, we can leverage each other to be able to move forward. It's the Vanderbilt and the Rockefeller conversation, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so it has to start somewhere. And you know what? Maybe it's as simple as um, understanding our finances a little bit better. Do we all understand what's coming in and what's going out? Not specifically what the number is, but just do you actually, un do you actually know? If you needed to, could you tell me, could you write down on a piece of paper what your cash flow is? You know, just it's kind of understanding, like, what are those things we need to do to be able to uh, accomplish something as simple as that? And then it's, you know, we're in grandma's house and we're having dinner. Did you know grandma's house been paid, has been paid off since 1982? Can you imagine how much equity there is in this home that could potentially be leveraged to be able to build that family bank? You know, so there's so many places to go here, but you have to first identify where are we going? What is the goal? What is the goal? And Nathan says he is loving his shirt, by the way. So oh, thank you. Nathan, I think you ordered your shirt, but you're welcome for, de for designing it and putting it up to, right. to be available. But we are, we're grateful for you. So thank you for showing up and helping us moderate um, and being here to support us and our, and our mission to help more people. And we can't do it without our community. So you guys are you guys mean a lot to us and we wanted to say thank you for 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 being here too. Okay, so let's let's give away a boat. And hopefully Donna will stay with us, right? I'm All here right. In spirit, regardless. Yeah. Well, should we play the boat video? Should we do that first? I actually like playing the boat video going out. So I say we give away a few. And All then right. if we need to, okay. we'll pay the, pay the video going. We're working it out still, guys. Yeah. All right. Who's going to win? I'm feeling like Nathan. Hey! hey. <laughs> I did say we we're going to get a new spinner, but I didn't find one, so we got to stick with this one until I can find one. All right, Nathan. Nathan, we're just going to make sure you get another boat, man. Right. Yeah, and he deserves another boat. All right, well, we're going to spin again. All right, well, since she already got one, we gotta spin again. Roderick's not on the wheel. Let me let me see here. Again? Yeah, let me let me see if I can refresh it. Let's try it. Let's try it if we can refresh it. Sometimes it okay, well, it added somebody, because last time it was 13. So let's see. Ah, 
Dalai Lama. Let's see, Roderick, are you on there now? Oh, you're on there now. So that's good. Dolly already won one, and he did not, they did not. Uh, do we have to spin again? They didn't claim it yet. Dolly Lama ever claimed his uh, boat? Yep. Hey! Growing up Jamaican. All right. So we've got... So growing up, up Jamaican, if you wouldn't mind, please provide to us or text us uh, the number that's going to actually uh, be sliding across the screen here in a little bit. But please text us your handle, your actual name, and your address, and we will get your boat headed out to you as soon as we possibly can. More than likely, uh, we should be able to get these out before the end of the um, uh, weekend. So, so yes. congratulations to all the winners, even those who won more than one. And we'll get these boats out to you. And for the, Aww. who was that that actually won um, Because I Froze? Like, who called that? Who was that again? Oh, Kelly. Kelly. Kelly well Miller. Done. Well yeah. done, Kelly. Well done. Yep. Oh, we got a new viewer. Found your channel about a week ago, and I think you guys are awesome. I've subscribed, liked, and I've already scheduled a Zoom call. I'll be speaking with you soon. Welcome. Nice. Yeah, and absolutely. thank you for joining us in the chat. That's awesome. I love to see that. Okay. Family's growing. A fam our, fa our family's growing. Okay, Roderick, we know you're on the wheel now. So next time I will do a better job of um, of refreshing. However, if you put words in the chat, I know that's how it scrubs. For It doesn't know that you're watching. It only will do if you've been in the chat. So I'm sure you were. Yeah, I can see he was before. I was just scrolling. Yeah, I don't know. Gosh. All right. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go... Everybody is going to go get ready for uh, their feast day, right? And that's what we're going to do. But what we want to leave you with is the sentiment and the concept that has been uh, like the guiding principle for us. We talked about passing the gravy, right? Today, we talked about how to spark up those conversations about gener generational wealth, essentially, that's the passing the gravy part. I don't know if that was really... I said it this morning in an audio room on Twitter, and they're like, you're what? talking about gravy? And I was like, no, I'm talking about generational wealth. They were like, ah, we don't get it. Maybe you need to have some gravy boats with you. I didn't bring one. But I think you guys all understand what we're talking about here, right? And you can't do that unless you know, one, unless you know where you're going. The other part of this is it has to become non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Like... If this, if this for you is somehow uh, hinged on how others respond to you and your idea of building a family bank, well, they, they don't have to be a part of you building your own family bank, right? They don't have to. So maybe this isn't that you and your brother, or you and your parents are going in to build this family bank. Maybe it's not everything that you wanted it to be. Maybe everybody's not on board. But don't let that stop you. And I wanted to share this part because I think sometimes we need, people need to see that example, right? They may need to see that your steps so that they have some to follow. And I think it's important to understand that we all play a role. And you may be the, the reason why generations to come and your other members in your family can see that it's possible because they can't yet believe the why me right? They can't yet believe and feel that it's possible for them. They can't yet include themselves in these conversations because the guilt or the shame or the, this feels ridiculous. What's the point of this? They can't, they can't um, get away from that. They can't break free from that. And they may need you guys to step forward so that they go, well, if you can do it, then I can do it, right? right. I think last last stream you were talking about and you were smiling and you were explaining why you were smiling is because I was talking about these concepts and I was able to fluently uh, explain or answer these questions, right? With these concepts. And there was a day when I couldn't, there was a day when I felt like I would never want to be in that position right? because I believed something about myself, right? It was a story I was telling myself that that's not me. That's not my lane. Still not my lane. You're not booking a call with me. <laughs> you're, 
you're booking a call with Donnell, right? Everyone who's called knows that. But that's not the point. The point is that we do have our lanes, but that doesn't mean that I need to count myself out of being in any a particular lane just simply because it's not the one that I function in. And I think the concept of wealth and building a family bank is just that. It is a lane that a lot of people count themselves out and they just assume I will never ride in that lane. And that can change today and that can change because you brought it up. Just one conversation at a time can change an entire family and the trajectory of your family. So we want to leave you with the concept of the boat. Maybe this is something that you can share with your family. Ask them, will it make the boat go faster? Ask them, are, who's in your boat, right? And maybe this, is, this concept will kind of bring it all, bring it all home for everyone. Well, anyway, um, we will leave on this note tonight instead, yeah? I like it. Okay, so, that sounds good. So we like to end with, if you don't come from a wealthy family. You can make sure a wealthy family comes from you. So stay focused. Stay protected. Stay tuned. Stay connected. My name's Angelique. And I'm Donnell. And our goal is to help you. Get self-directed. All right. Here's the boat video, guys. Have a happy Thanksgiving, happy holiday season, and enjoy your family gatherings. We hope to see you soon. Have a good night. In 1998, a British rowing team dreaming of the Olympic gold found themselves ranked seventh. Their focus had always been on the competition day, but they realized the keys to reaching their highest potential were hiding in the decisions that they'd make over those next two years. Faced with two obvious choices, continue their current path and expect the same result, or give up. They discovered a third transformative option. The united under one guiding question. Will it make the boat go faster? Every decision, every action was weighed against this mantra. If the answer was yes, they could or would have to do it. If the answer was no, it was forbidden, non-negotiable. Prior to the competition, this team was doubted and ridiculed, but no one knew what they had been doing. And once they hit the water, they were nearly unrecognizable, achieved their pinnacle, and won the gold. So we ask you, What, what is your goal? What are you willing to do to achieve it? Will your story feel unrecognizable, even to you? Are you willing to light your beacon and stay focused, stay committed? Is your, your story, story non-negotiable, or are you waiting to find out how you ranked? Your financial future is, is not, not a game. game. You are only competing with yourself and those in the boat with you, your family and the many generations to come. Will this make the boat go faster? It's a sounding alarm, a beacon of clarity amidst turbulent life decisions. It's not just about speed, but direction, purpose, and an unwavering commitment. Every choice, every sacrifice aimed at the goal. The first agreement this team made was to become fully self-directed, making their health their wealth, adopting a new perspective on their time and freedom, and the decisions they could fully control to reach their goal. Will we make your boat go faster? That is our pledge to you. Our mission is to arm you with knowledge, strategies, and insights to ensure that not only you reach the goal, but you do so long before your race is over. Hey, before you go, we want to remind you that becoming fully self-directed means gaining complete control over your wealth, time, and freedom. It's not just an idea. It's a framework, a mindset, and the power to make informed decisions to secure your future. Being here means you're taking those steps, and we want to thank you for allowing us to guide you. We believe that we grow farther and faster when we grow together. So tune in next time and tell a friend to tell a friend. We've helped thousands of people just like you start their journey to financial freedom. And if they can do it, you can too. And if you're ready to learn more, we got you. Get a head start by grabbing these two free books. But how do they get them, Donnell? Head over to my website where you'll have access to a few things. A ton of free resources, case studies, and over 100 five-star reviews from people just like you. And in 15 minutes, we can explore what's possible for you. So don't wait. Invest, Invest in what, what you want, want, when you want. want. But first, let us help you get, get self-directed. Self -directed.